Hi everyone, George here. It's Christmas Day, early in the morning, and it's snowing. I'm looking out the window. We have a, a bit of white snow coming down, a fair amount actually. So I, would, I want to uh, wish all my viewers a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and a wonderful year ahead. And the purpose of uh, today's video is to give you my top five mistakes um, that I incurred or went through <laughs> experience in 2021 playing advanced squad leader the reason why I'd like to share that information with you is so you don't make the same mistakes I did it's a learning process and on the second half of this video what I'd like to talk to you about is how I got into the uh, hobby uh, of um, squad leader now what I have before me here on the board uh, is a just a generic um, board so I can show you or um, illustrate to you uh, what, what I'm talking about. A little zip of coffee. Enjoy, guys. Oh, yeah, to all my Russian friends, uh, Privet, all my Polish friends, uh, Jane Dobre, Kalimera in Greek, Boan et Natale to my Italian compatriots. Turns out I'm partly Italian. Hmm. Anywho, on with the video. So uh, I start a little journal here, right? This is uh, actually my work journal, and I found it after I boxed up my belongings from the office, and I, I put a paper clip on the 14th, 10th, 2021, my last journal entry prior to the state of the start of the pandemic, and the world changed more than anyone could imagine. And I put a little paper clip there, and going forward it's my ASL journal yeah. with my little uh, Chinese fountain pen All right top five mistakes in no particular order first one was forgetting about mandatory wall advantage and I've made a video about that recently and what that entails is uh, let's put down a couple units look just so you, you know I'm not doing uh, I'm doing actually doing something Let's pick somebody as an allied, a squad, and uh, and the SMC just to make it a little bit interesting. And let's give them a support weapon. I'll keep it off to the side so I don't have to click on that button all the time. All right, so let's give them a little support weapon. And let's pick somebody from the Axis. Of course, it will be a German. A, uh, four f our, our four six sevens. That was the, in the classic game, that was the standard uh, German squad that you found in most most of the classic scenarios. So, um, and a single man counter. Let's make him a 9 minus 1. Alright. So basically here, the unit, because he doesn't have an in-hex tem, has to claim mandatory wall advantage. Uh, some newbies might be putting uh, clutter on the board by putting that there. Right? But, for those that are experienced, know that this unit here has no choice but to claim the wall advantage. All right. So that was uh, my fifth one. All right. Here's uh, the way I'm going to illustrate the the other one. Okay. Uh, there you go. Let's let's we let's say goodbye to our American friends there and delete them. Delete the wall advantage counter, and let's give this fellow here an MMG. So support weapon, give him an MMG. So right here, the German player has a, a formidable position, right? And uh, let's say his opponents are a couple of Russians. A few Russian squads. Let's go to the Russians. All right. Uh, 
typically in the classic game we had a lot of um, so pardon me if I if I'm not getting the the concealment into play here but um, it's just to illustrate uh, the mistake it's not to not to meant to be a, a complete tutorial anywho you have a situation where all right the German is guarding this position he probably has a LOSD here is the defender let's see so he has a LOS to there to there not to there fair enough now a uh, Russian player comes in let's say they go CX one to there two to there three four five six and uh, just for the sake of e expediency I'm gonna just place them like this let's say this is the third player turn okay and by the fourth or fourth or, f or fifth player turn they 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 make their way up the hill and eventually they reach the crest they take some casualties and what's really wrong with this picture at this point in time what we realize is you know what these dudes had some support weapons so we forgot the support weapons off the board or we forgot them completely so lesson learned here is always check your OB don't take anything for granted now when we're playing with Vassal we do what we call a SSF scenario starter uh, uh, file and typically it's one player but you should have your opponent uh, validate it and, and double check it um, when you're playing face to face of course check your scenario card make sure you have all your counters some people as a system check as a, a way to check everything they stack the the actual counters on the OB of the scenario card before commencing unfortunately we don't have a copy of the scenario card alongside <laughs> the map here and we have to frequently consult a document and look at the screen and make sure everything is correct that's another mistake that has happened uh, oh now let me show you another thing okay um, so I have it bookmarked and uh, indulge me while I get that page started okay I have this wonderful thing um, wonderful tool uh, bookmarked uh, the vassal information table generator okay and I no disrespect to the people that created it but as you can see by default this is up to turn 15 and, and you can pretty much customize it the way you want and you can put in the victory conditions here and uh, by accident should you leave this by by 15 because let's say copy HTML to clipboard right and now what you want to do to get into your game is um, pick a label any label I think will do right and then right click label and you copy your HTML code in here get this wonderful table there it is and now I left that 15 there and simply what I did was um, let's see terrain no 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 it's not that it's not the uh, it's the counter tray that we want okay and we got to go to other uh, turn markers and, and we can put the end marker there no harm done but if your opponent inadvertently does not see the end that the scenario turn and uh, the scenario ends at turn 7 you mistakenly think it's up to turn 15 then um, you end up seeing your opponent uh, uh, retreating for some reason not engaging you thinking he has a lot of turns to to make things happen and inadvertently uh, they forget that they only have seven turns unfortunately that has happened uh, as well 
Uh, and like I said before, this is not the fault of this wonderful chart. This wonderful chart is a gem, uh, a well-organized, well-thought-out uh, tool that you can use. But just remember that when you actually get to the web page here, you can customize it by selecting the number of turns and then subsequently uh, the other superfluous numbers are gone disappear uh, so that's uh, let's see We're getting so exaggerating turns OPP fire concealment loss right and I recently did a video about that one too so basically let's go back and say um, yeah let's illustrate that again let's put these guys up here and this dude up here um, and this fellow here is concealed well good old rule the moment he does open fire and he places that counter there he's no longer concealed damns the rules uh, for a while I thought that you know the up fire should come off during the uh, advanced fire phase nope that guy loses concealment the moment you put the up fire counter on um, and the last one of course the last one and get and again this is just for the purposes of illustrating no particular example the last notorious mistake that I did uh, was let's go to any OB yeah allied OB and let's put some dummy counters in here let's move the action to another part of the board I uh, hope everybody can see that and let's move these guys here it's just an example guys all right, advanced phase, boom, I go into close combat. We were rolling for ambush before getting these guys revealed that there is no straight fa factors. We had some sort of magical reasoning until somebody pointed out to us that in the, um, that in the advanced sequence of play, what results from this is these guys being eliminated instantaneously because they cannot reveal a strength so that was my top five I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I'll tell you a story about um, how I got into um, squad leader so that's the second half of, of this video so basically uh, when I was in the eighth grade the teachers had a strike and it was one of these horrible strikes that lasted a long time my eldest sister at the at the time had a, a restaurant in nearby here where the area is called um, Ville Saint Laurent and she named that restaurant Le Colon which means the old ragtag villager if you may in French it was a very popular lunch and breakfast uh, greasy spoon enjoy the coffee guys so I was at home stuck doing nothing, I, s I suppose. So she invited me over to the restaurant and said, Look, George, why don't you spend the day with me? All you can do is sit down and have fun. So um, there I am, sitting down. I had a, a great breakfast and reading a book. When all of a sudden we learned that the dishwasher, the fellow that was washing the dishes, didn't show up for work and wouldn't come basically ditched the work found another job said I'm not coming anymore so my sister turns to me and tells me George do you mind helping us out and taking care of the dishes I'm there fine she showed me how to use that machine it was a big industrial machine and uh, I worked for a couple of weeks there uh, got to learn the importance of the French language in Quebec because I saw two guys arguing it looked like the third world war was about to start and later on uh, I approached one of the gentlemen and I said well what are you talking about 
Oh, no, that was nothing. We were just talking about baseball. Wow. That was something. So, um, I kind of realized that uh, there was um, something to be learned about French. And that's where I, I learned most of my French was on the job and uh, at CJIT. So, that lasted about a couple more weeks before school started. And that summer I had gone to work for my sister as well and built a little nest egg. A couple of savings here and there. I remember back then we had compound savings bonds in Canada. So they were interesting investments, so I invested in that as well. And um, by the ninth or 10th tenth grade, maybe 10th or 11th, just before graduating, I was a pretty popular guy in the library where we uh, nerds all hanged out and geeks. And um, back in those days up in Canada, we didn't have any Toys R Us. Mom and Dad, well, Mom was a housewife and Dad was uh, not the richest man in the world. But he always kept me well fed. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Lobster tails, filet mignon, you name it. There was no... Um, budget when it came to food. Uh, budget for everything else but not for food. So um, we didn't have Toys R Us. Uh, my parents were not rich but I had built a little bit of a, a nest egg and I remember buying a, a Minolta camera, a cockadoo as a pet. That was my dream uh, pet and um, my friend Dennis Tufexis. We used to call him the Bible Pusher. He uh, came to the library one day and says, look, I have Cross of Iron Squad Leader and uh, we're getting a newer version and um, I'm going to sell it and I'm going to auction it off. If more than one person wants it, I'm going to auction it off. Well, wouldn't you know it, I uh, entered the auction and uh, I remember earning money those days wasn't easy. That summer where I worked um, as a dishwasher, at the end of the summer, I could, I would look at my forearms and they were all, all red from chlorine. I didn't see no sun. That's how hard I worked. And the auction fell through in my favor at 50 bucks for uh, Canadian for Squad Leader and Cross of Iron. And I had to coax uh, my most experienced friend into playing with me. I played one game, got my butt handed to me, and then uh, my other friends came over and would play in my little squalid apartment. I remember putting down scenario 12 uh, and the, the board spanned across my living room and carefully putting the, the um, um, carefully putting all the, the counters there and uh, I also remember blocking the Germans with my lonely priest up on the hill, on this hill, and, and winning scenario 12. That was interesting. And then um, after high school, uh, I took about a year off from school. And I wasn't playing or doing much at all. Um, eventually, I had put that game in storage. Uh, after high school came CJEP, and CJEP, uh, while I was going to school, I was working again, and university, and then um, I ended up finding a job in tax, and that entailed um, a lot of reading uh, every year to be up to date with tax rules, to be able to serve my clients well. And ultimately, that game uh, of Squadron and Cross of Iron uh, ended up in storage, in a nice plastic storage container, along with other valuable mementos and possessions that I had. Um, we moved, we had moved to an apartment, we moved back to a home. Uh, then my dad passed away, so, uh, you know, there was a lot of um, financial burden, I would say. Yep, um, it was only mom and I for the longest time. And um, 
graduated from school, of course, and did my career in tax. Um, then I did a, a small stint in the Greek army for six months, made it to the rank of corporal. All that time, that game stayed in storage. And then I married a very wonderful and pretty young lady. And uh, soon after that, I had my firstborn son. And my career after that oh, turned in an upward direction. I ended up getting a, a wonderful job at Deloitte. And um, the money was pretty fair. And it became pretty good year after year. I was performing rather well. Um, of course, with um, a family, uh, the time um, the time I had available f uh, for gameplay was very limited, if not at all, non-existent at all. And um, you know, was being I was a, a very proud father, to say the least. I was downtown at the Eaton Center from time to time would shop for toys um, for my son of course and I walked into a store that had board games as well and that was around 2003-2004 I saw a copy of Starter Kit ASL Starter Kit and that came to a complete shock to me because it was pretty rare to find a war game where I live in here in Canada used to go to this shop and I still do uh, from time to time to Valet au Coeur on uh, St. Denis Street. That's where you can find a little treasure trove of war games around here. Uh, otherwise you have to go by via mail order I believe. So I found Starter Kit 1. It was only 40 bucks Canadian. Wonderful. I took it and left it in the shrink. But I didn't put it with my classic game. Uh, eventually I got Starter Kit 3, I couldn't find Starter Kit 2, and uh, I finally just caved in and, and ordered it from the, the States, or I don't remember if I ordered it from the States or found it in the, 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 that little toy shop, one of the two. But I said, look, there's Starter Kit 1, 2, and 3, I don't have full squad leader, but ASL, but that will do. I mean, I'm hardly play in any case, if I play at all. Kept that in storage as well. And then, well, around 2014, um, we broke up. I had a, a pretty hard divorce, became a single dad. And uh, I still had my games, though, in, in a plastic storage container. And about a year or so after, I just needed a break. So uh, I broke open my uh, my uh, old game, took out Hube's Pocket Scenario 15, set it up, and uh, the other scenario I set up was, I believe, uh, Penetration of, of Balta. And I posted a picture that I took off my iPhone uh, to the classic war game uh, classic squad leader page and a couple of people told me well look uh, that is not a hill that is a marsh blah 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 the most experienced more experienced players and at one time uh, people were encouraging me to install Vassal uh, or VSQL at that time and uh, get me going on this because I had installed it previously but I couldn't get it to, to couldn't figure out how it worked. Alright, so I played a fellow f by for one year or so, and then finally had enough. I said, you know, I had I really had enough. Th th at times the, the games were enjoyable, at times they were not. Um, and at the same token, uh, that's when I met my good friend Alain Chabot and told me, you know, George, classic, it's a good game. John Hill designed a good game, but there's something better. And uh, Alain got me started in ASL. And I hardly read the rules, but the ASL rules. And as far as ASL, full-blown ASL, I didn't have a rule book. I didn't have any of the modules. I only had Starter Kit. 
Well, soon enough, uh, Alliance got me started, got me graduated from ASL, from starter kit, to a full-blown ASL. I said, well, what am I going to do now? So that's when I bought the concise, the concise uh, rule book and the rat charts. And Stu gave me a couple of games as well. I already mentioned that, but uh, it's neither, neither here or there. But then, as I became more familiar with the rules, I had initially bought Beyond Valor, the concise rule book, the red chart. I said, look, I need the full blown rule book. I got the full blown rule book. I'm looking at it now. I started storing my scenarios in a binder as opposed to the original box and uh, got Beyond Valor, then I got Yanks, because yeah, Yanks, let's face it, the latest edition of Yanks is, is, is a wonderful game. And now I'm on to my third um, addition to my collection, uh, that being for King and Country. I did not get anything from PTO yet. Um, and uh, I do miss um, I do miss the Allied Miners and um, uh, not so much the Axis Miners, but anywho, uh, I like the Allied Miners a, a lot. <laughs> uh, so that's the extent of it now, and it's been now two years that I've been playing Advanced Squad Leader, and um, every day is a new uh, experience. But again, um, we have to balance work, family, and gameplay and it's very challenging even when you're a, a single dad it's actually more challenging I guess when you're a single dad um, and if I have some advice to give you there uh, choose your opponents wisely um, choose your opponents wisely uh, make sure you're playing with a fellow that uh, gives you the utmost respect uh, has a good temperament and uh, their primary ob objective is uh, learning more than just plain old winning. Uh, we all like to win, nobody likes to lose, but um, well, there's more uh, there's more to to enjoy uh, and savor in a well fought victory that was filled, or a well-fought loss for that matter, that is filled with an experience of learning the rules, the history, and uh, tactics. And, and, and for that reason, that's why I, I have a lot of uh, respect for fellows like uh, uh, Jim Bishop that uh, post their blog and provide great knowledge. Um, Carl Norguera, uh, and quite a few other few folks that um, I'm sure everybody is, uh, is familiar with them. The type of people that actually give you good advice, good guidance, and do not belittle you. So that's the type of people you'd like to seek out in life and have them as your friends and your playmates. And uh, that's what I wish uh, upon everyone that enjoys Advanced Squad Leader. With that said, um, that's it for today. Um, I hope to provide you next week with another short video. Um, and uh, that video, just to give you a little heads up as what is about to unfold here. Um, next Saturday, what I'd like to do is provide you with a video about my 2022 wish list. And I'm pretty sure that none of my uh, wishes will come true, but I'll express them in any case. And the other thing that I'd like to give you a heads up on is that we're almost finished uh, the second gameplay with Hasmo 4, um, the kids these days scenario with Dennis and I. Um, and um, it was a blast. Uh, I don't think I fared too well, but it was a blast just the same. It was a fun scenario. Uh, I'm not going to give you any uh, spoilers, um, so stay tuned for that one, and I believe 
this Friday at 7 Eastern Daylight Savings Time, this Friday at December 31st, I'm going to be having a Festung Budapest match with uh, Dennis and Mark. Um, we'll keep the room open for anybody that would like to uh, join and uh, watch the game. You shouldn't move counters around and uh, uh, and don't intervene unless unless um, unless you do so politely I suppose and um, I'm, I'm not sure on which which discord channel will be on but we'll definitely be talking on discord and having fun so if um, you're not doing anything uh, on New Year's night and you feel lonesome and you'll feel like watching an ASL game feel free to drop by and enjoy the conversation and the gameplay. With that said, take care and have fun guys.